In part three of our presentation on therapeutic applications of light, we'll be looking at the area of light therapy where my own work has been taking place. And this has to do with using light for the mind rather than for the body. As you well know, uh, colors have particular effects on our mood. In very broad um, outline, the um, warm colors such as red, orange, and yellow are generally considered to be stimulating, invigorating, whereas the cool colors, blue, green, turquoise, are known to be relaxing, sedating. Well, this uh, use of color is now becoming very widely spread. You, you see everywhere around us more and more LED gadgets um, working with, with colors and cycling through colors. And um, so while it's clear that uh, this is a very attractive and, and uh, powerful area, uh, there's also ways to bring this to uh, a much more uh, deeper level. And uh, this is what I've been doing through a technique that I call light modulation that I've been de developing in the past years. This consists in embedding within light projections um, low frequency modulations pulsing of the light at, at uh, lower frequencies. The interest of this technique is that it allows us to interact with our own psychophysiological rhythms through resonance at their frequency. There actually are a good number of um, rhythms within us that we can interact with um, in this range. In light modulation, we pulse light up to a frequency of about 50 hertz or 50 pulsations per second. And this corresponds to what's called the flicker fusion frequency. It's the maximum frequency at which you will still perceive pulses. Beyond that, you will perceive a uniform field. And going below this frequency, we can bring down rhythm down to very, very long and slow rhythms all the way to rhythms taking over a full minute to unfold. And there are, there are biological rhythms within us that are that slow. For example, the melanopsin response in the, the uh, retinal cells, um, a little faster, around 10 hertz, uh, a tenth of a hertz or 10 second cycles, you have uh, things such as peristaltic movement in the intestine or the craniosacral pulse. Uh, slightly higher, you have the rhythm of our, of our breath, which is, of course, of fundamental importance, or the heartbeat around one hertz. And, of course, you have the brain waves, which I mentioned earlier, which are right in the range that we work with, between about 2 and 30 hertz, um, and which is a very important uh, area to work with, with uh, light pulsations. Additionally, um, when light pulsations are used, it's been done with stroboscopic pulsations. These are pulsations between a full on and off state, so bright pulses of light. And this is quite intense. And we early on, we found out that uh, th it was interesting to use lower modulation of the light. And this is what we do in our technique. We don't pulse fully on or off, but we only vibrate uh, the tiny portion on top of the, the intensity, for example, the top 2 or 3% of the intensity only. And this results in a much more delicate uh, light pulsation. Sometimes it's at the limit of what you actually perceive. So a very soft stimuli, more in the, in the sense of an homeopathic stimuli. This has many advantages. For one, it removes the danger of uh, epileptic seizures, which is always present when you work with stroboscopic pulses. Here is an example of the type of um, oscillator structure that is used in light modulation, where you have three oscillators for each light sources in the system. You'll have two controlling the intensity or modulating the intensity of the light, and you'll have one controlling it, the color of the light. So intensity modulation corresponds to making the uh, light brighter or less bright at the frequency where you want to work with modulation is actually a form of frequency modulation of the light and it is uh, alternating between different colors of light you add the frequency that you want to work at 
Um, I'm also working now with uh, um, more sophisticated modulation structures, which have up to 12 oscillators per light source. And this enables us to work now with not only pulsation rhythms, but also such things as the acceleration or deceleration of rhythms, which is also a very powerful way to interact with the brain. Now, we've integrated these uh, light sources into a full multisensorial environment, which we call Sensora. Sensora incorporates this light uh, modulation technique with a sound field using sound instruments that I developed in the uh, starting in the 80s to specialize sound and we also use um, kinesthetic vibration in a special chair which has an array of sound transducers converting sound into kinesthetic vibration patterns to give a physical anchoring to the sensorial experience so this environment the sensora is now used as a therapy uh, therapy tool um, especially by my associate, uh, Ma Premo, uh, who is a, a psychotherapist with whom I developed um, these um, therapeutic applications of the Sensora. The Sensora is a, a professional uh, system that's used now in uh, around the world. Um, and here you have a... Um, small uh, diagram of the different stages, technical stages th uh, that led to the evolution of this. It really went uh, through many generations uh, of the sound, lights and kinesthetic instruments composing the system. And this has led to um, the latest creation, which is uh, called the Sensosphere. And the sensosphere is a, um, an instrument that's derived from the, the same technology as the professional uh, sensora, but it's been created as an object that uh, anyone can uh, use in their own ho home. And uh, it, um, it's a powerful tool for mood lighting, using this uh, technique of uh, delicate light pulsations to uh, create... Um, mood enhancing effects in a much more powerful way than simply um, working with pure color. So to um, sum up the advantages of using this light modulation technique, um, you can create the, the sensation of movement and flow in the color, uh, which greatly enhances its, its, uh, its beauty and, and the way in which it uh, affects and touches us deeply. Um, the uh, control algorithms are, are uh, very sophisticated in the sense that we work with areas of oscillators and uh, so we, we work with ranges of frequencies and variations of frequencies to tune onto the effects that we, we want to achieve. And then we um, combine ranges of colors to act in specific ways on mood and we can embed within those color ranges brainwave entrainment, uh, delicate pulsations to um, increase their, their um, therapeutic potential. In the sensosphere, all these elements are brought together to create three main types of mood lighting themes. The first one is the relaxing theme, which uses cool colors, green, blue, turquoise, and slower brainwaves uh, rhythms, such as the alpha range. You then have the energizing type of um, patterns, which uh, use more stimulating colors in the red, orange, yellow range, and uh, beta brainwaves. So it helps to um, uh, stimulate mental activities or bring up creativity and so on. In between those two, you have the balancing uh, theme, and this one uses all colors of the spectrum in equal proportion, so overall harmonizing effect. Um, 